Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling and thanks for taking some time to check the video out today. Um, today guys, we're going to do a follow-up on the video I did this morning. If you guys didn't see it, I did a video talking about a rule that tournament directors need to put in place uh, for the co-anglers in tournaments where they're not allowed to cast past an imaginary line down the middle of the boat. They've got to fish their water behind the boat or just straight out in front of them, but they can't cast past that imaginary line just like they do in ultimate match fishing uh, with Joe Thomas there. Um, and I had several co-anglers make a comment that what about the pros screwing their co-anglers? So we're going to get into that. I'm going to tell you one rule that needs to be in place that's not in place uh, in regards to how pros treat their co-anglers. Um, guys, real quick, I just want to give you guys the weekly reminder. Please swing by uh, fishthemoment.com. Check out our lake map breakdowns. Um, we got all of our spring breakdowns up on the website. Um, I'll put the Fish the Moment Lake Map Breakdown link in the description of this video. And these breakdowns, are, guys, are a great way to learn more about any lake you want to know in the country. Um, if you, if we, if one of the lakes you're looking for is not on our website, you can book a virtual lesson with me, and we'll go over any lake you want to and uh, get you some good spots and some good, uh, good foundational approach to the lake. Okay, guys, let's get into this a little bit here. Um, here, here is my opinion on a rule that needs to be instituted as far as what co-anglers are going. And first of all, before I, I talk about that, I want to I want to uh, make the comment in relationship to uh, what they were talking about getting screwed by your pro partners. There are already rules instituted that the pros, can, the pros can't tell a co-angler that they can't fish and they can't like handicap them where they got nowhere to fish. So say for example, if you, if, you know, if you position your co-angler where there's nowhere for him to cast, uh, in my opinion, a lot of live scope situations are, are severely handicapping their partner because they're targeting schools, little tiny schools right in front of the boat and there's nothing else for them. You know, there's no fish around there to, for even to fish for. I hear a lot, I hear a lot of co-anglers uh, complaining about that. Um, but those rules are already instituted where uh, pros cannot handicap a co-angler. Now this doesn't mean what I was talking about in the video. It doesn't mean that a pro can't say, Hey, I'm coming up on this lay down here. Let, please let me fish it out. I need to make 30 casts on here before you make a cast. You got plenty of other water to fish behind the boat or wherever. I just need to do this. So hold, I got one second here. We're working on the boat where the boys are cleaning it up. I'll be right yeah, back. I'm back. I got the boys out there cleaning the boat up right now. They're going to uh, wanting to trade a little uh, toy money for tr for uh, cleaning the boat up. Okay, so anyway, what I was, what I was saying here, there's already rules instituted uh, that the pros can't handicap their co-anglers. Here is the rule that needs to be instituted that's not there as far as the pros against the co-anglers. Guys, and I see this every tournament, it's, a, it's about these pros that are driving like nut job idiots in rough water or, you know, just dangerous in general. I see it every tournament takeoff. Every tournament takeoff, you guys know it's choppy. And I see these guys, most of them are usually young, younger dudes. They're running balls to the wall, fully trimmed out. Their boats are going like this everywhere. Their co-anglers are like hanging on for dear life. In my opinion, that is grounds for disqualification for a pro angler. Also, if you are like cutting too close to a boat, like if a pro angler put your safety in jeopardy by trying to pass somebody too close. If they cut too close between the bank and from the point and another bait boat, in other words, if they have any type of unsafe uh, driving that's going on out there, the pro angler should be disqualified for that. And that should be made very clear that you guys are not going to drive like a bunch of idiots. You guys are going to scale it back. You're going to be safe. You're going to have safety first, or you guys aren't going to fish these tournaments. And um, if, if, if I was tournament director, I can promise you guys there would probably be pros disqualified every single tournament for unsafe boat driving. I see it every tournament. I see it when I'm driving. I, I, I see how these guys, they'll come up super close to you trying to pass, and then they'll pass right in front of you. I mean, I see it all the time. I see these guys, like I saw it when we were at Kentucky Lake the other day, I saw these guys driving, you know, like freaking idiots in three and four foot waves, just, you know, busting their partner's balls completely to death. And obviously it has a lot to do with your co-angler. You know, if your co-angler says, you know, 
you know, you can push it, yeah, on this rougher water because we need to get back on time, that's fine. But what I'm talking about is putting your co-angler in any type of uh, danger as far as the way your boating practices are should be grounds for disqualification. And I think that that needs to be reiterated every single tournament because I, I've drawn a lot of guys out that have complained to me like their date, their partner before he goes, man, I just, I, that guy yesterday just beat the crap out of, out of me. And I said, I said, man, the next time that happens, you need to look over at your pro partner and you need to say, you need to slow this son bitch down right now, or you're going to be disqualified from going to the tournament director. And like I said, there's no need for that out there. It's just going to somebody, people do get killed all the time. I've been in three tournaments, guys, three Bassmaster tournaments where people have been killed in the tournament because of unsafe boating. It happens every single, you know, tournament out there around the country. And most of it is because guys are going too fast, especially in rough water. So anyway, fair, fair play here back and forth. I mean, one of the things that we need to do as far as uh, it rules instituted is to give the co-anglers more uh, more authority over their pros and how the, their pros drive the boat. So anyway, that's just my two cents worth. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about it and we'll talk later.